Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Abbas, and with me here is Team 14212 Metrobotics from New York. They have one of the most optimized robots I've seen this season, very simple, yet super effective. And I'm really excited to jump into it and talk about yeah, what makes it so great and so fast on the field. All this and more coming up on First Updates Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotics students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. Check out our all-new FTC content coming to Fund's YouTube, including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind the bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash first updates now. Okay guys, let's get started with your drivetrain. It's kind of hard to see what's going on under the hood with the side plates, but I'm sure you guys can flip it up and talk about exactly what you have for your drivetrain. Yeah, of course. So this is the bottom direction. We have our LGBs, of course, controlled by a Blinken, um, and we have it do different tasks. And I would say the most important the impressive thing about our robot, uh, it would drive train would be the odometry pods. So these are themed after the legendary gluten free pods, and these are kind of a redesign. So we made them a little bit smaller, uh, more compact for our robot because we wanted to just like be as compact and as um, fast as possible. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And so I see that you guys have two of your drive motors laid in the channel, and then the other two looks like they're coming like they're vertical. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So one of the reasons why we chose to do this is because we wanted the drive chain to be a bit uh, narrower and not that wide. So we wouldn't we weren't able to mount both of them inside if we were to use just uh, this channel. So we decided to go for one upright. And the way we countered that is we actually put some weights over here in the front, just so when the arm does flip over, it won't tip as easy. Mm -hmm. And so talking about a little bit the software behind your drivetrain, what uh, what are you using in Autonomous to control your drivetrain? And then are there any teleop automations that are really significant uh, in regards to your drivetrain? And also, I know you mentioned your LED, so you can probably talk about that now. So one of the main things that we use for uh, for our autonomous is we use Roadrunner. Uh, it's a, I'm sure you guys know what it is, it's a trajectory chain playing profile. And we've spent a lot of time tuning our odometry pods, uh, tuning the pads, just making it as accurate as possible. Um, and then some of the software things for our robot. Um, so for, we have a PID loop for the lifts so that it can go up to a set position at all times, right? And we have uh, our state machines just to allow for more advanced uh, movements like simultaneously. Um, and besides that, you know, just we have our autonomy sets. Mm -hmm. It has those. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. And so, you know, talking about your intake now, what are you using for your claw? Has it changed throughout the season at all? Um, and, you know, is there anything you've done that you think has really, really elevated your claw's effectiveness this season? So originally we had a custom linkage claw that we designed. Based, um, but we ended up going for a loony claw in the end just because it was the most simplest and easiest for this certain case that we have. So if you look closely here, we just have it mounted from, this is just the loony claw, and then we have it mounted straight to an axon servo using a um, servo hub. Got it. And so, uh, like, were there any modifications that you made to it that you think, like, really made you grip the cone better or faster or anything like that? Um, uh, anything from a software standpoint as well that really helps you guys? Any sensors? Uh, so we actually originally were planning on using a color sensor, but we've noticed that um, like we were we would rather have faster driver practice mm -hmm. and order like rather than having softwares and instead of depending depending on the software, you could depend on the human. Um, but one thing I guess we put like we have our silicone on here instead of the original um, silicone mold on the inside because we thought it would be better grip. And it's been working really well for us, uh, including our like servo instead of like a regular go of servo. It's much better. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And so I see you guys have like some sort of junction alignment device above your claw. Uh, so can you talk a little bit about that? You know, when in the season you added that, was that something you've had the entire season um, and what it's constructed out of? 
Okay, so for what it's constructed out of, it's, it was made using a shot bot that's top max using a polycarbonate. And so we had a few iterations of this, but we ultimately settled on this because it's just lightweight and it works really well for our autonomous. And so when you flip over the, the claw, it's able to align up to a junction pole and it's able to swerve on it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And so, like, at what point in the season did you guys add this, or was this something you've had, like, since day one? This was something that we uh, planned on and we implemented really early on into our robot. Okay, okay, cool. And so now going to your arm, uh, your, you touched on your wrist a little bit, so let's talk about your arm. How are you powering your arm, um, and are there any, like, software automations or features you think that are really critical to its success? All right, for our arm, we use uh, two 25 kg servos that we found on Amazon, the same that we use in our claw, and we have them powered using two SPMs. And the reason for this is because we didn't want to overload one of them and have them blow up in a match and have to redo a bunch of electrical work. And so we just use two SPMs. It makes it more reliable. In case one of them fails, we can just resort to the other one. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And so uh, how are you driving that arm? It looks like you guys have uh, some sort of gear train going on. So... Was that like always how you did it, or did you change after noticing a need for that? Um, okay, so originally we had a very uh, our entire team's model has always been just have as simple of the robot as possible, but have it perform at its peak capability. And originally we had a very simple design, just a single slide, single claw, but we wanted to push the limits. So one of the ways we did that is we have this custom pivot assembly, and we use a combination of CNC to aluminum, polycarbonate, and 3D prints. To, so we have we hold these two servos in here. And instead of doing a direct drive, we actually geared it down to a 0.8 ratio. And this just allows it so that if, if it get, ever gets caught, it's not pulling, like it's not straining the servo immediately. Um, and it's going through the gears instead. Yeah, yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Um, and so now talking about your slides, what are you using for your slides? Has it been the same the whole season, or have you guys changed it? So at the beginning of the season, we used some old Viper slides from last year, and it was really slow, and it wasn't very smooth. So we actually, this year, we bought these Mizumi slides. So these are SAR 240s, mm -hmm. um, and they've been running really smoothly for us. We have them geared to two 1150 RPM motors, and it allows for really fast extension. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, that makes a ton of sense. And so from a software standpoint, what automations do you guys have, like in Teleop as a whole for your cycles? Um, or has it just been like driver practice, driver practice, driver practice? Well, we do uh, have a good amount of driver practice on our controller. We also have a bunch of different presets for our buttons. So, right. so for example, we auto we've automized, uh, automated this whole like pickup and quite a lot so if you press one button it'll grab uh, a cone and then it'll so first it moves the arm up this way it doesn't get it's not dragging on the floor and then we have presets so we have like low junction medium junction high junction this way there's just you're we're trying to like minimize on the amount of human error that can happen so if i go to the low junction it'll automatically go up and it'll stay there uh this is using the pi our pid loop um, getting a troll loop and then we're able to score it and then one really cool thing that we actually do and we kind of took this idea from Terabats and it's basically we kind of dunk the cone down first and then it goes back so just to make just to have that extra security of the cone on the junction mm -hmm. yeah no that that makes a ton of sense and so I think one of the things that makes you guys really as high scoring and effective as you are is your driver practice so can you talk a little bit about like how you do it, or if you think there's like anything special that you think teams that are looking to perform at a similar level should know? So one of the main reasons uh, we are as good as we are is even though we have a simple robot is, of course, driver practice. And one of the ways we do that is actually, um, so one of our mentors, Steven, they created a XRC sim simulator, and that's where we get all of our practice. Like we have hundreds of hours just driving on our computer, driving around, you know, playing with the controller, and just having that like having that mentality this year is really important like not just having the technical abilities but also to be able to know like where you are on the field and where your opponents are is really important mm -hmm. this year mm -hmm. yeah no that makes a ton of sense uh metrobotics thank you so so much i think this has been a really 
a really incredible interview. You guys have a lot to share, and I think teams will be able to, you know, take from this and improve their own robots and teams as well. So, reporting for first updates now, I'm Abhas, and thank you, Team 14212, today for joining us. Thank you. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotic students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. Check out our all-new FTC content coming to Fund's YouTube, including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind-the-bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.